Hi, welcome to Deep Dive with Kelly and Jesse. My name is Kelly. And my name is Jesse. And this month, Kelly and I are going to give you a deep dive into the Koha to Koha interlibrary loan module. So this is something that will work with you to set up in your system. And if you have a neighboring Koha library, you'll be able to connect with them and make ILO requests. This is so exciting. And I'm glad we're having a really deep dive into it to look at all the the setup required, Jesse, but it's super exciting. Me too. So our plan for this session is we'll first talk about the administrative setup, and then we'll focus on a staff perspective where we walk through placing the request, receiving it, and what goes from start to finish. So Kelly, what's the first thing that we want to do when we want to set up the Koha to Koha ILO? This is a plugin. So you're going to want to, as a partner, send us a ticket when we can go ahead and install that plugin on the back end for you. So that's the step one. Once that ticket is open, we're we're going to work with you through the rest of the steps, but this is a good overview what to do once that plugin has been installed in your system. So why don't we start with our system preferences? So in our global system preferences, we're just going to type in interlibrary. That's going to take us to all of our interlibrary loan preferences that we have. So there's a couple in here that you'll need to set up um, in the system. The first one is going to be that ILL module. You'll want to, you'll notice here, master switch. Master switch. <laughs> set that to enable. The next thing we're, we'll want to talk about is the circulate ILL. Kelly, let's talk a little bit about that one. Yeah. So this is gives libraries the opportunity to reduce the number of steps that is being taken through the ILL process. So we're going to show you both ways on how to use the ILL module with this circulate ILL system preference on or not on. And we'll kind of discuss that, but this would allow you to really, in essence, check it right out to that library from the ILL request page and not worry about going to that patron in your database to do the checkout or placing the hold. This option also speeds up the process quite a bit. So when we do the example of the circulation, we'll start with circulate ILL set to enable. Now you do have some really nice options with this module and functionality. Let's say you don't have another library in your area that's on Koha, but you still wanna use it to track ILL. You can actually still use it as a Z3950 target. So think about when you're cataloging, you search for a title at another library from a Z3950 target, you bring a copy of that record in. This is almost that same essence where it will grab a copy of um, a particular title and you make that request to the library through an email. And again, we'll show both, both options. ILL check availability. So what this is doing is it's either checking or not checking external sources for availability during the request process. So it's gonna to check to make sure that that title is available before it makes that request. We have the ability to send out emails through the ILL module and you can decide to use a different email address for these ILL notices versus the, your library address you have in your um, kind of your library page system. The next one you'll see here is ILL hidden request statuses. So when we get into the interface for the ILL module, it will keep track of all of your interactions, requests that were made, requests that are pending, requests that are fulfilled and completed. And this gives you the opportunity to kind of clean that interface up. So once an ILL has been completed, returned back to the library, what this tells the system is hide those completed interactions. That way you only see any type of pending or requested items in there. The ILL module copyright clearance will allow you, if you click that edit, Jesse, this would allow you to add copyright information during the request creation. So if you wanted to add some specific text, you could do that here. 
I'm thinking it's more like we're sharing maybe PDFs or something that you want to make sure it's for, for educational purposes only. Don't photocopy, things like that. So you can certainly add text here. And I think there must be a specific reason for this. And I think it's great, um, but maybe not something a lot of libraries need to use. The next one here you'll see is ILL module unmediated. Now we have that set to enable. And what that does is if enabled, the ILL backend supports newly created requests automatically. So I'm going to say, we were told to keep this enabled. Let's keep it enabled. There's probably a reason to not enable it, but for our purposes, we're trying to share requests back and forth. We're going to keep that as enabled. Okay, ILL OPAC backends. If you are using a, a third party besides the Koha to Koha ILL module, you'd be able to add in additional backends, um, and those would be enabled. And then, of course, the last one here you'll see is the ILL send staff notices. So if you, for wh whatever reason, do not want to get copied or you do want to get copied in this case on things that have been modified, canceled, um, they can be sent to a specific um, your, that ILL email that we said above to say, hey, just to keep you informed, we're going to send this notice to you. All right. Now that we have our system preferences set, our plugin is installed. The next thing we wanna do is we're gonna go back into administration and we're gonna make sure that we have a few things set. The first thing we'll take a look at is the MARC bibliographic framework. You wanna make sure that you have an ILL or an interlibrary loan framework set up. Now, I'd say a lot of people might already have this framework set up in the system if you were using this to create a brief record um, in Koha so you could check it out to the individual. So you wanna make sure that you do have this. If you don't have one set up, what a lot of people will do is just create a new framework, call it ILL, and you can copy the fast ad. It's, it's totally up to you. We will link to another. Um, Monday minutes that we have where we talk about setting up frameworks, but this is where you just want to make sure that you do have an ILL framework in here because the configuration for your ILL module will require you to enter in a framework. Yep. And that code we'll be using. So our code is ILL. So just remember what code you create. The next thing we'll want to do in administration is we'll want to identify a patron category for ILL. So if we come in here, you'll see that we have something called ILL libs. Um, and that's the code we used to identify the ILL libraries that we'll be using um, as targets in our system. So you can see here, we set up an interlibrary loan category, giving it a code of ILL libs. Um, and then again, that allows you to identify which fields you want to set in here. We just set ours for 99 months, but you can identify and set those up as needed for um, your ILL patrons in the system. Okay, Kelly, now that we have our configuration for, um, the, we set up the plugin, we've set up our system administrations, we have our framework set, we have our patron category set, what's our next action item? We, we need to create a patron within that patron category we just created as kind of our sys account. So our system accounts, we are going to use that to create library, library accounts to say I'm borrowing from this library next door, but we need this system account for this ILL libs patron category. So here's an example where we've created, um, we've called it just Tina ILSDI, and that's what we're going to use to identify that information within the configuration for this module. And this again is going to be whatever is going to help you identify that this is a system admin for your user. Always a good rule of thumb, don't delete <laughs> this user. Exactly, exactly. And um, what, we, what we need from here, um, I was just going to say Tina, what we need from here, Tina, is the username and password for this patron because we're also going to use that in the setup. Excellent. Okay, now that we have that set, where are we going next? We can finally, nope, we have to go to Z39.50. I was like, gonna, I was going to say we can jump into the plugin, but not yet. Step number, yep, 
Exactly. So under additional parameters and administration, we're gonna go right into our Z3950 servers. This is where we're actually setting up the libraries that you would like to borrow from. So in this case, Kelly and I have identified two libraries that we want to have borrowing and lending privileges with. So the first one is going to be Marie Train 3 Free Library. So we'll open this up so we can take a look at what information is needed to set it up. You would of course need to reach out to that library and make sure they're comfortable with doing this process. And then once that's happening, you would need to contact us, whether through that original ticket of creating the ILL plugin to get the port information. So our systems team will be able to give you the port of that library you're willing, you're looking to set up your ILL process with. Host name is going to be the OPAC or the, um, the main public facing location of that library. Database, again, will be provided by Bywater Solutions or your support company that you're using. And then the rest is up to you. You can choose you know, what you want to enter in here. Pre-selected is generally with your Z3950 server. When you're doing a cataloging search, you can pre-select those. You'll want to make sure that you grab the correct um, syntax um, and then, of course, the correct encoding as all Koha systems use UTF-8 for encoding in there system. So once you have that set, we're going to save this in there. And again, you can add as many targets as you want. So Kelly and I are going to use two today. So you can see we have the Marie Train 3 free library, and then we also have the Spencer Model 2 Memorial Library. So we're going to use those targets. One thing we're going to, one piece of information we're going to grab from that Z39.50 setup is the ZID. So once you create that, Koha is giving it a unique ZID number, and you're going to see that in the URL. So this has a ZID of 17, another key piece to put in the ILL plugin. So we'll need that information for the plugin, as well as that ILSDI patron we created, and um, that ILL framework. So we're, we're putting the pieces together, Jesse. And for those of you that might be following along with us, have the blog post open too, because we'll create those step-by-step -step instructions for you to make sure you're hitting and knocking off everything in your checklist. All right, so now we're gonna go back to administration. We're gonna grab our plugin and go down to manage plugins. You're going to look for your plugin that's labeled ILL plugin Koha to Koha. We're gonna come over here to actions on the right-hand side, and we are going to click on configure. This is where we are going to set up our configuration. Now, Kelly and I have learned through trial and error, which has gotten us to this spot, this uses YAML. So if there is a space that shouldn't be there or a punctuation or a abbreviation or even <laughs> uppercase versus lowercase, these are all things that could essentially not get get you results in the system. So you wanna really pay attention to detail here. And again, if you're using us for support, we will absolutely go in and check, make sure everything is set up correct for you. So the first thing we wanna do is set up our targets. So we have two libraries that we're going to be using as targets, our Spencer Model 2 Memorial Library and our Marie Train 3 Free Library. As Kelly mentioned, we need that ZID first. The ZID is going to be the number of the target that we've just added in our Z3950 server. The next will be our ILS DI. That's the location that it's coming from. So you can see here that model two is the location of our OPAC followed by a string of SIG bin Koha ILSDI.pl. And that is what's bringing in those results into the system. If you've ever, if you ever set up the self checkout module, you'll know you added a CGI dash bin when you created that. So it's pretty similar to that. And again, we'll have screenshots. This we don't want you to go about going about this blind screenshots and all like good examples of how you're going to set this up. 
Now, Kelly mentioned earlier to remember the username and password that you have created in the system um, for this individual user. Um, so you're going to enter that information in here. Now, again, if you have more than one target, this is where you're going to be entering in the second one. You do want to space in between those. Again, Kelly and I learned from trial and error here, you want to make sure there's the correct indentation. So you want to make sure those are the same. The last thing you'll see at the bottom after you've entered in your targets is identifying the framework. So this is what Koha is going to use to build that stub record in the system when it's bringing it in from that outside library. It's pretty fantastic. I'm super excited. All right. Once we're done, we're going to hit save. And now we have set up all of the configuration in the ILL module. So you'll notice once you turn that system preference on, you're going to see a new button here for ILL requests. So in our next video, we are going to show you how to perform ILL requests, view the information and process those requests in the system. Okay, perfect. This is fun. Thanks, Jesse. Thanks, Kelly.